Now it would be fair to say that layout progress has been a bit sloppy up to now, but 2023 it all changes and there's some really good modelling tips. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. Now, if you remember from video, I think it was 177, I was um, carving out a bit of landscape here to try and make the hill to go up with a tunnel over there and a short tunnel here. However, it's become obvious and through numerous comments that this tunnel is a bad idea and it needs to be a cutting. And I take it on the nose that was a bad idea. So I'm going to excavate, excavate, I'm going to carve out some more of this and turn it into a decent sized cutting. If we take a closer look at the point work now, if you recall, this point was actually just here and I moved it across because I didn't, I wanted these lines to be more parallel. So it wasn't so obvious if they ran into a tunnel that the tunnel would contain a point. So as we haven't got a tunnel now, I'm free to move this back to where it was. So these two lines now go off to feed the fuel um, depot and also the line that goes right around the reverse loop that comes back into the, into the main area. Whereas this line here has got the head shunt to, f to allow locos to move around the loco shed uh, and go from line to line without fouling this line by coming up into this head shunt, changing the appropriate point and going back in. So that's where we are right now, but I'll just put in all the, uh, the buildings or the sort of placeholders so you can get a better idea of what I'm about to do next. Now switching to the track plan just for a moment, on board 22 and by the symbol 22, there are two tracks. Now, going back to reality, there's the fuel storage area and the two tracks that are feeding to it. Obviously, the two tracks that are feeding into it can't have a tank at the bottom of it, just in case you had a runaway train, we'll go straight into the tanks. Now switching back to the tracks plan again, we're looking at board 23 and below the symbol of 23, there are two lines. And back to my real world, those two lines consist of a refuel area and a wash plant and a little support building. And then the bigger picture stuff, there's my old four lane loco shed left over from the days of steam and just next to it is the new diesel inspection area. Obviously we need some kind of support structure, so I've just popped in um, an old, I think it's a Hornby uh, building. Sadly, it's the top of a, of a, a four-storey building. I didn't have the bottom section. Anyway, it's in there as a placeholder. And then there's a, finally a loco shed uh, down here, which is more of a probably a set-aside area where I might uh, just put my inspection uh, track inspection vehicle and there's a little uh, signal box popped in the middle there just as a placeholder. So that's the general gist of the TMD and as I mentioned in the last video I wish to get a board done and completed every month so I'm going to start now on board 22, get the points in, uh, the point motors installed, the wiring done and see how far we get. Now before I fit this piece of track to this point, it's worth mentioning a tip. Now, <laughs> some people have great difficulty in threading fish plates onto rails. Now all I use is a small bent piece of rail. As you can see, this is code 100 and I've just turned the end up. So all I do is I fit my fish plate onto the end of the rail and then I offer it up to the track that's been installed and then I pull it off. And let's be perfectly honest, it's, it's, it is free because we've all got gash bits of track lying around. What could be simpler than that? And then with a steel fish plate, it's exactly the same, pop it into place, poke it in. And with the steel ones, you might just have to grip it when you take the other track out. And there we go. Simple. Now, just a quick recap on how I wire my track. Soldering iron set to 400 degrees. The solder I use is 60-40. That's 60% tin and 40% lead. 
I cut a little piece of the webbing away on the, on the track and then with a file I roughen that surface and then of course you need to tin it so with, uh, with your soldering iron like I say set at 400 I pop it on the track like that give it a few seconds and then in with the solder should get a blob and again lovely the stuff you see burning off is the solder because this is a resin core solder it has the flux embedded in it so that's that ready to go and then I want two wires and I'm using 1602 with the my usual sort of wire strippers which are absolutely brilliant and if you're interested in buying any they are expensive and that is the number you need to search I can't leave a link in the show more tab they're only um, available from the manufacturer and then I give these a twist and then tin these wires as you'd expect This isn't a soldering lesson by any stretch of the imagination. And then those are ready to go. So now all we need to do is put the wires on the track. Now, this is the upper level. So mine are wired black to the back. So that cable, that, that track here is gonna have the black on it. So I put them uh, to go inwards on the track, if this makes any sense. Sorry, you're not gonna see this one very well. So I blob that one in there lovely give it a couple of seconds to cool give it a good tug lovely hopefully you can see this one a little better a bit more solder on the cable and then i i put the wires to the inside hopefully you can see a bit of an angle here let it dry cool and there we have it so the two wires now, um, they're not on the sides of the rail, um, so they are reasonably well hidden and I only need to drill one hole to get them through into the baseboard, all straightforward. How do I secure the track to the baseboard? Well, if I'm just planning, I will use Pico screws, but when I'm good to go, I use copy decks. And when I say Pico screws, these are the ones I mean. They're a tiny little screw. And hopefully you can see there. You just drill a hole through a sleeper and screw the track down. Of course, when it, in, the, in the scenic areas, I then take the screw out and put some filler over the hole. In the non-scenic area, like my fiddle yards, then I use these all the time. They're brilliant. Where did I get them from? DCC Train Automation. Now obviously before I put this piece of track in place I need to drill a hole for these cables so if I just sort of hold it in place about there I think it's going to go mark the baseboard with a nice big fat fibre pen I have checked underneath and then simply thread them through. I will put an ident tag, an ID tag on these cables in the fullness of time, and that's that one going there into place. Now I would normally just glue this down straight away with copy decks, but I'm not gonna do that because I wanna do these other points first in case I'm gonna disturb this area. So I shall just pop this to one side and carry on with the other point work. Now the point wiring is very similar and I've done this in loads of videos in the past. Um, you have uh, two red cables and two black cables and they just uh, go across the shorting links there and uh, I shall put a link here to how I wire my points. Um, so you've got the track power coming in on a piece of 1602 and I normally take it out on 702 and that goes uh, to the point motor and then it's the point motor that switches the track power to the frog and the same with the black uh, I'm, out of, I'm out of 702 actually these are both 1602 so track power comes in goes back out to the point motor and when you switch the um, the tortoise point motor 
depending on its direction you'll either put it in a red the red feed or the black feed onto the frog cable all straightforward so i just need to pop this into place and then it's a case of getting out the copy decks and if ever use this as a as children <laughs> we always recall it um, and so we just put a, a few blobs of this in I'm sure you remember it from your childhood it smells of fish remember to keep it away from the mechanism here because obviously that moves and then a couple of blobs on here and we normally wait about 20 minutes for it to go uh, quite tacky and then we put this into place there is one modification I like to do to the to my points and as you can see here and that's the removal of these two um, sleeper parts off the end of here and I've also trimmed the pegs from the switch rail so I cut, I cut those off so when I mount, if I'm going to put a surface mounted point motor on, you know, the dummy point motors, I've still got these two sleepers on this side to mount it to. But they're, the reason for them is to use Pico point motors underneath um, the baseboard. So that's their purpose. So there's no point in having them unless you're going to use it to put the dummy point motors on. Right, I've just got to wait 20 minutes and I can pop this one into place. Now that previous footage was shot on the Monday and it's now uh, just gone half past 12 on a Tuesday afternoon. How have I got on? Well, a lot of the tra track is now down and glued with a few errors I need to point out to you. The six points, one, two, three, four, five, six, are now installed and the droppers have gone through and a couple of bits of track. You can see some pink tags here where they're just bits of paper that cover up holes because in error, obviously not reading the track plan, I'd installed this point here and that was the, um, the, the hole for the armature wire and these for the cables. Anyway, I realised my error and have moved that. So these two um, tracks here go off now to the refuel section and the um, loco wash. So these, I can't do any more here because these are bridging pieces of track between boards. Similarly, the point here will go across these these two boards and this will have to go in when these two boards finally connect um, there'll be a piece of track across here and over on this side this piece of track will be installed once this board is installed permanently alongside this one along with this one here so those tracks will just go into position so it's more or less there the double slip again will bridge the the uh, two boards that'll be a challenge on its own um, and that's the point that goes to the other shed over here so that one's in great now Let's talk about th terminal blocks. Now, some of you will know that I have quite a preference for these, but as many people have pointed out, this isn't the only option. You see, the beauty of these terminal blocks is they come with bridge pieces and a cover. So you can either connect them up you know, all to your negative side, or if you want to use these ones, to your positive side. I've even got some where I've put a, an earth, um, earth tape over it and used it as a main earth terminal. Or, it then occurred to me, why don't you just cut them in half and you could have half for your, um, your black feeds and half for your red feeds, as long as you have decent distance separating them. Another great idea. But a lot of people have said, what's wrong with using WAGO, or WAGO, I think I'll call them WAGO, connectors? Something I had no knowledge about whatsoever. So what are they? Well, they are these little things here. Come in various sizes. So I, I got some from um, Amazon, and I thought I'd show you how they work. Now these connectors that I've bought are size 221 and there's a 2 terminal, a 3 terminal and a 5 terminal. And they work by, they have these little doors as it were that lift up and then you insert your cables and then when you close the doors it grips the cables and the cables are connected together. 
What do you do with it? Well, I mean, I'll show you something I've done with it, and I use a hot glue gun, and I just glued it to the side of a board, but you could leave them dangling. Right, so let's show you how you could use it if you have a loathing of soldering. So this is a piece of 2402 cable. This is big, thick bus cable, right? So the issue is you want to bring a dropper in to connect to this cable and you don't want to solder it. So what you do is you cut your bus cable, trim it off, insert it into your connector block, sh whoops, shut the door, just one, just the one, cut the other one, uh, sorry, trim the cable back on the other one, insert that cable, shut the door, and then bring in your new bus wire into play, You can poke that one in as well. Whoops. And hey presto, you've cut your bus cable, inserted your connector, and you have your new dropper. Are these any good? Well, give them a tug. They are pretty nifty. And until yesterday, I'd bought these, but I'd never used them. But yesterday, I found a case where I actually did need them, and they came in very handy. Now, do bear with me while I remove this board. And get it out of the way. because the thing I want to show you is under here. Now here you can see a DS64 and the feedback circuitry here has five brown cables coming into a bit of a lash up through some chocolate block. But could I use the Waco connectors to do a better job? Well, I certainly could because on a new one over in underneath the board here, I have five brown cables to bring in, so I thought I could simply just pop them into there. And quite surprisingly, these connectors are rated at 20 amps, 300 volts, which I find absolutely incredible. And finally, I think it is worth showing you that on the back here, you can see where the metal contact uh, the contacts are, and if I undo one of these doors and take out the cable, you can see the the length of cable that you need to desheath, as it were. Um, because obviously if the cable isn't long enough, then you would actually miss um, the metal contact. So uh, that's the sort of size you're after. There we are. And then for tidiness, I just whap some hot glue gun glue on the top of here and then stick it to the side. There we go. Wago terminal blocks 221 and there will be a link in the description to the Amazon page where I got these from. They are a bargain. So now it's time for me to attack the wiring and as you can see all the, all the lines are here from the six points that I installed earlier. So I've got six uh, tortoise point motors to install and then obviously the, the, the track power feeds um, to power the, the rails themselves. To control the points and the bot detection stuff that I'm into, I need to mount those components on something. So I've got a piece of decent board, and what I intend to do when I go to B&Q and buy some hinges is to hinge this piece up here so it will flap down when I need to do some maintenance, and it will kind of flap out of the way when it's not required. Um, and it's far easier to get these boards done, or the majority of the work done, when they're sort of vertical rather than trying to crawl underneath. It's an absolute nightmare. And if I can give you any advice is don't do it that way. Always, always try to do the majority of the work 
you know, off, off, off of the layout, away from it um, when it's upright. Because, I mean, I've done some, made some terrible mistakes. So I've had to lay blankets on the fiddle yard to try to get under. It's dreadful. This kind of structure, construction I made um, earlier on a board over there. And while it was many, many months ago, there's a little turn, turnbuckle and allows the board to drop down and there are the three DS64s and the BDL on the end. I was originally using magnets to hold these boards up but I found they sort of clunked every time you put them up and sort of snagged when you pulled them down and I didn't think that vibration was doing these components any good so I took the magnets out and then a simple turnbuckle. It's ideal. Right, I've got to do some wiring. I'll get back to you later. Now as I'm sure you're aware I use tortoise point motors. They've been around for absolute years they're very reliable though they are not D these are not DCC compliant there is a uh, a new one from uh, Circuitron I think it's called the Smail um, all you the DCC concepts and there is the Cobalt Digitals but I like these so I'm going to stick with them but there are a couple of modifications that are worth talking about now the first modification I'd like to mention is regarding the holes in the um, contacts on the eight points of a tortoise point motor. This is an old one so I can show you on these but the hole there is very small and it's difficult to thread through uh, 702 cable so what I tend to do is I drill them out all straightforward to really give it a little bit more room. The drill I'm using is a 1.3 millimeter drill and I believe that's 50 thou. On the new tortoise point motors they actually make two sets of holes in different sizes so you don't need to do this but this being an old used one it's worth mentioning it. Now what I also use this, this pin vise for is to drill out this hole here because I want to use a thicker armature wire. Now the armature wire that's supplied by Tortoise, this little one here, is 25 thou uh, diameter, which is 0.65 millimeters. Now I use one millimeter piano wire, which is a lot more forceful, let's say. And, but obviously you need to drill it out because it, obviously it wouldn't fit in the hole for when the, the, thing, op oops, for when the thing operates. So that's why we drill it out. It's worth also mentioning this pin vise drill is because this is the one I use to drill through the sleepers when I use the Pico uh, screws to screw down the track. So very useful. If you haven't got a pin vise, you need to get one of these, a 1.3 millimeter drill, or if you're from across the pond, I think that's about 50 thou. And it's the ideal size then to drill these out and to, and to drill this hole out for the armature wire to go in. Right. So that's the modifications that I make to this. Now you might ask, why have they got these holes in the first place? Well, on this old point motor here, you can see that the, uh, the silver foil that takes the power from the wire into the machine has actually broken away. And it's because if you put a, uh, a cable on the face of it, it can easily get tugged. Um, and obviously pull away this silver wire and it's sort of if you keep um, soldering new cables on and off you change your mind or whatever um, it seems to have a, a, a detrimental effect and on this old one here which is actually for the bin you can see this is torn off completely so it's always best to wire from the rear and then make a, a sort of a, a neater job then and the silver uh, paper then is, um, is much stronger as it were and just before you go to install it, it's always worth getting a battery. This is a nine volt smoke alarm battery and whacking it on the terminals and testing the point motor to make sure that it runs its full distance and it runs quietly. Lovely. And then before I install it to the, onto the baseboard, I cut out a small section of cork and I glue this onto the point motor and then uh, pop this into place and any vibration or noise from the point motor then hopefully doesn't get transmitted or certainly reduces the transmission from the point motor into the baseboard. And there we have it, tortoise point motors. Beautiful. Well it's now six hours later and as you can see seven point motors have been installed and the cables are just sort of loosely gathered up. 
I don't know why, I think earlier in this video I said there were six, and there's obviously seven. Um, bit of a clump over here, um, but it works out okay, it's no big shakes. Um, oh, whilst I was having my lunch, I watched a YouTube video, for a change, um, the Hornby 2023 announcements, um, upfronted by Simon Kohler. And if you've seen it, perhaps you'd like to put in the comment section down below your views. I must confess, I was disappointed with only three new locos, but they seem to have got themselves into a, a rut would be the wrong term, but they've got themselves in a situation where they have to now bring in the rest of the locomotives that they've promised over the last two or three years and sort of play catch up. So fair play, but what do you think of their announcements? Right, I want to have a close up at this point and show you how these are wired. Now, excuse the holes, this is where I move that point um, back further on the board. Now I've brought it back to, to its original position. Right. Now there are eight cables running into here, and if you use electro frog points, this might be of interest to you. So the outside two, the blue and the yellow, are to switch the point. And the next six come in two batches of three. The first three, which is the violet, pink, and brown, probably don't concern you, they're to do with a feedback circuit going into train controller or, or iTrain when you're doing computer control and you want feedback. But the other three are of interest, I imagine. The green is obviously the frog wire and the red and the black are track power that feeds the frog. Easy, all straightforward. But if like me, in the past, you've wired these things up and found that the frog wire is the wrong way around. You should have put a black on it and not a red, vice versa. Well, the way to do it is, as you can see here, the red is on the top and the black is underneath. Now, if you remember, when I, I wire my top layouts, it's black to the back. Well, this is the back of this board and this is the front. So the black wire, oh marvellous, the black wire goes to the back and the red to the front. Excuse me. Well, he rang once and then hung up. Marvellous. Um, so continuing with the, with the three cables, the green, the black and the red, this is the top, the front and this is the back. So when I say it's black to the back, so the black cable goes to the back um, connection on the tortoise and the red to the one in front of it and then the green for the frog. Um, and if, if the point was the other way around or whatever, it's always the black cable goes on the, on the, on the bottom terminal and the red one above it and then the frog or it's all kind of vice versa. It could be that it goes frog, black, red, but it's the red to the front and black to the back. Easy kind of stuff. Right, what's left to do now then? Besides the mess of wiring, I need to put some components on this board because this board then obviously goes up into this area um, to form the, the swing down section. Now, as they often say, it's the following day. I've been to the dentist and had a filling, brave boy. And on the way back, I stopped into B&Q, also known as Block and Quail, and got some hinges for my uh, little flap, and that's attached, drilled a few holes to house these, com the, these components known as DS64s. Now, as you can see, I've mounted four. Each one will control um, four points, unless you switch them in pairs. Um, so this will cover the boards. I mean, I know there's only six points here, but there are 16 points, I think, or 15 or 16 points all told. So these float for hopefully, hopefully, sort those out. I thought I said hopefully then. Um, yeah, and there's a turnbuckle here to release it. So if it's in its uh, working position, it will be like that. And then you just want to bring it down to flip the burnt turnbuckle and you can bring it into play and do any modifications that you need to do. Um, there's a gap here and at the other end and this is where the old block detection stuff goes in. That's something called a BDR 168 and there's loads of wires to go in there which I won't bore you with at the moment. Now at the end of the last video I did mention about losing your mojo and I said that I would finish this board in January and the next one February and the next one March and I'm working well to get that done. There's about, I don't know, 12 hours worth of wiring to be done here I imagine by the time it's all in, connected, tested and we can run trains on the board so hopefully at the next video we should be able to do that. You can hold me to my word. And I mentioned about the mojo thing because 
I clearly needed to set strict targets to achieve them because otherwise you go up to your well railway room and you just faff about you know change a coupling change a set of wheels and come back and don't get much done but if you come up with a determined uh, motivation if you like to do something like obviously this thing here has taken the best part of three days with the filming then you know you get to a satisfying sort of end state um, but clearly it's not finished yet I can't do any of this next week. Next week it's a McKinley video editing uh, kind of week, so I've got a lot of, a great deal of work uh, to do for David, and then I'm back to this the following week after that. Um, if you remember, I mentioned about the, the Hornby um, new announcement, so please leave a comment uh, if you feel strongly that they're going in the right direction or it's a satisfactory outcome. Now don't forget, in the Show More tab are the link to those Wago or Wago uh, connector blocks they are pretty nifty so you might want to check those out and wrapping this one up there's the old patron button if you want to become one hit the button if you're not a subscriber you clearly should be ashamed of yourself and there's a button there remember subscribing is free and i'll see you in two weeks time and a video here and here to keep you going thanks a lot take care bye bye